Hi, how are you doing? I'm Anton from Plevsky, and I'm sitting here on a windy hill on Seminole Reservoir on a block of the Windy Hill Sandstone of the Mars Formation. And this block of the Windy Hill Sandstone is really interesting because it's got a whole bunch of little footprints on it, little walking tracks of pterosaurs or pterodactyls. And the walking tracks are made up of hind feet with their little four toes, and also the front feet with their three toes, the little three fingers, because uh, pterosaurs had wings like bats with little three fingers, and the main wing was the fourth finger. Bats only had one finger, pterosaurs had three. And as you look at this track slab, you can actually see there's walking tracks. So here's one, front and hind, the next one, front and hind, and the next one would have gone that way. Then there's one going this direction, and there's a couple more coming this direction. So there's, all, there's at least three different trackways of animals here. Uh, might be a fourth. So these little guys were walking around on four feet in the Jurassic on a tidal flat in what's now Wyoming. And it's pretty amazing to think that 150 million years ago, what lasted an instant of these little animals scuttling across the tidal flats is preserved right here. Right now I can put my hands on it, put my finger on a pterodactyl finger from 150 million years ago, the imprint that it left. That's kind of mind blowing. There's a flip side to that though. And the flip side being this block came from up there. Gravity brought it down. This block eventually will wind up down in the bottom of Seminole Reservoir, about 150 feet below the surface. And there's a bittersweet side to that because there's a nice block over on the shoreline there that had a series of maybe eight or 10 front and hind foot pairs of a little pterosaur. Um, it was here in June. It was here last year, it was here the year before. I came to look at it this year and the surface of that block has slid off because the Windy Hill is made up of these thinly bedded um, laminated sands and the bed, the lamina with the pterosaur track slid off the main block and it's down there somewhere. So the sand that was under the water in the Jurassic when the pterosaurs walked on it is once again under the water. So we lost that one. It's the way it goes. There will be more coming out of that outcrop, no doubt, as the rocks continue to fall down. And we've got things like this in the meantime. Now this is an interesting one because it shows that pterosaurs, at least these guys, walked with an overstep walk. That's why the little hind foot is in front of the front foot. And you see bears and raccoons and other quadrupedal animals walking like that. So the front foot lifts off, moves forward, and then the hind foot follows. Uh, different animals use different gates and um, at different walking speeds, the gait can be different. You can have an understep walk, an overstep walk. Pterosaurs pretty consistently seem to use an overstep walk in most trackways around the world, no matter the age, whether it's Jurassic or Cretaceous. So that's sort of interesting. Historically, Wyoming uh, is pretty famous for pterosaur tracks like this as well, because in the 1970s there was a big debate among paleontologists about whether pterodactyls walked on two legs like a bird or four legs like a bat. There had been tracks in the 50s found in Arizona in the Mars formation that were thought to be pterosaurs, um, but they were reinterpreted as crocodilian tracks. It turns out they're probably pterosaurs actually, and it was tracks from Alcova Reservoir in Wyoming in the Windy Hill member that were found by a high school science teacher in the 70s. He found this really nice set of tracks that was pretty definitively pterodactyl. There's no way it could have been made by anything else. And since then, lots more tracks have been found around the world, including these here at Seminole in the Windy Hill, at Glendo, at Alcova, and all over the world. In Europe, Africa, Asia, they've been found thousands and thousands of tracks at this point. But the Wyoming ones are still, in terms of identifying pterosaur tracks, the most important because it was the ones from Alcova in the Windy Hill that really proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that these are pterosaurs, not crocodilians. If you're having a hard time picturing what pterosaurs might look like walking on four legs, I have a high fidelity paleo art restoration uh, done on my ever-present whiteboard, and it shows the pterodactyl with his little hind foot stepped forward after his front foot has picked up and moved forward. Um, so on one side, he's moving his front foot forward. He's got three feet on the ground at all times, he or she. Um, and this is roughly what the little guys would have looked like when they were scuttling around. And this is about life size, actually, as it turns out. That's about the size of these animals um, if I line this up with the track site. So it gives you sort of an idea what they might have looked like. 
So with all that being said, you know, gravity's gonna take this block away as well. I'm gonna make a 3D computer model of it so it will be preserved for posterity. The other ones, there's photographs and memories. Let that be a lesson. If you're a geologist or a geoscientist, you better get out while you can. You better look at rocks while you can. You better look at the world while you can. They might not be here next time. You might not be here next time. You don't want your last moments on the planet to have been spent in front of a computer or a spreadsheet or some fantasy geo model. Get out and look at the real rocks. You're gonna be glad you did. Thanks for watching.